officially live. Officially, officially live here. I'm here with uh, uh, Jake Newton. And uh, Jake, do you want to kind of uh, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself uh, and kind of maybe why you uh, are so unique or why you, you know, what's, what, what makes you a little different than the average person? Gotcha. Um, so, <laughs> take this really anywhere, but uh, <laughs> me in a nutshell, 34 years old, single father to two beautiful children, seven years old. My son, his name's Nash. My daughter is nine years old. Her name is Harper. My two best friends um, played professional hockey for, for 10 years. Nice. Um, I guess technically longer than that, but I was being paid for 10 years. I'd okay. say I was probably professional the year I moved away from home at the age of 15 to go and play juniors, okay. uh, the step below uh, college hockey. Okay. So I did that for four years. Um, played a, a year of college hockey at Northeastern University in downtown Boston, and then nice. was fortunate after my freshman year to sign an NHL contract with the Anaheim Ducks. And uh, wow. it's interesting when I when I look back on, on that and where I'm at in my life now and in terms of the advocacy that I use my platform for in terms of mental health. Um, so, you know, a lot of people have regrets when they look back on their career. You know, for me, I was always so laser focused on the NHL growing yeah. up. I, I grew up in a small desert town um, in the desert of California rated the fourth worst city in the whole state. So uh, <laughs> hurrah for me. But uh, yeah, you know, I was, again, I was always so laser focused on hockey and I have got my own mental health story and journey and I, I put it out there um, in podcasts and yeah. different interviews, you know? And so when, again, when I look back on my career and the fact that I didn't have a career in the NHL, I wasn't mentally prepared to be a pro at that time. I was only 21, but mm -hmm. now having the perspective that I do life it was, I was never gonna have a career in the NHL. I was only ever going to just strictly make it there to create a platform for myself, to share my story, and to potentially help others. Wow. So um, I don't know if that makes me unique, but uh, I, I'd say my willingness to, to be open and be vulnerable and be authentic um, without any fear whatsoever in other people's opinions of me, um, I think that can be unique. That's awesome. Now that's a really cool story, and kind of going back to the, you know, the professional you know, hockey player. Yeah, ne never have I, you know, ever stepped on the ice and, and got off the ice and had more money in my bank account. So that's, you know, that's a that's a feat in itself. And yeah, and I think too, you touched on a topic, you know, mental health. Um, you know, I th and I've said this before, but I think it's a topic that, you know, isn't talked about a lot. You know, obviously I think, you know, everybody uh, is going through something, right? It's just a matter of, you know, it, you know do some people maybe handle it better than others? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think, yeah, open discussion, especially two males, right? Yeah. I mean, that's something that really is never ever talked about is, you know, guys talking about mental health and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I talk about it a lot, just, you know, wearing a lot of hats with real estate and different things like that. So I'm excited to kind of, you know, if you're okay with it, dive a little deeper, you know, with that. I, I know that's, you know, something you're passionate about. So I'm excited to kind of, you know, dive a little deeper with that. But uh, I, I did want to get started with the first question I ask every single guest is, what motivates you? Oh, that's pretty simple. I've got, uh, again, two kids. Yeah. Um, you know, prior to them, it was it was the the professional playing hockey aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, the NHL was what motivated me. That's kind of my why, my excuse for continuing to show up in in the way that I did. Mm -hmm. But certainly now, it's it's my kids and wanting to make sure that I am more for them than my parents were for me, and then understanding the incredible importance of having a positive male role model mm -hmm. in anybody's life, yeah. not just a man or yeah. a boy or mm -hmm. a, you know certainly a girl as well. I think you look at statistically what happens to children when they don't have their father in their life. And I certainly don't want to be that for my kids. So yeah, my kids certainly motivate me more than, more than anybody, more than hockey ever has and more, more than I myself have. That, no, that's, that's really cool. And I think holding on to something, and I talk about it a lot as far as just having some sort of motivation in your life. And, um, you know, we all need something, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have kids myself, but you know, I, you know, wearing this bracelet, uh, talked about it before, but it's a, you know, I promise, um, you know, LeBron, you know, has a foundation, I promise foundation, he made a, a promise to his uh, kids, uh, I think it was when his first son was born or something along those lines that, you know, he would always be there for them. You know, I don't have any kids myself, but, you know, this thing right here reminds me that, you know, hopefully one day when I do, um, you know, I am the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, giving them, you know, my, I'm, as much as my undivided attention as possible. That's why I'm, you know, kind of engulfing myself in so much right now, it, you know, because I have the time to do it. You know, I, 
have never like babysat, but you know, I've been around, you know, toddlers and I understand that, oh my goodness, it literally, it's, you don't have a second to think, yeah. you know, it's just, you know, so I'm sure you could, you know, go a little <laughs> deeper with that more than I know, but uh, that, that's really cool though that, you know, your kids are your motivation, so. Yeah, I, I, and I could add another one onto that too. Now, you know, I, I work as a, as like a mindset coach. <laughs> Um, so that's certainly motivating. I, I get the most, so I, I pour myself a lot into other people. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just the mindset stuff, excuse me. I also help non-athletes in terms nice. of like life coaching, mental health coaching. And so being of service to others is, is certainly motivating as well. And understanding the type of energy that I put into other people and into different situations and then how much I get back. Nice. So it's in the giving that I receive so much and that keeps me motivated as awesome. well. Awesome. Actually, probably more than motivation, it's inspire, inspired. Nice. I feel like motivation is more short-term get yeah. you out of bed get you to the gym get yeah. you to work get yeah. you to that date or whatever it is but inspiration is long-term so my kids are more of an inspiration for me as well that's awesome that's really cool you kind of I, I got some questions that I think you'll be excited to hear about and yeah. I'm really excited to hear your answers but uh, so pivoting a little bit uh, the next question is would you rather okay make $2,500 a week for the rest of your life or get 1.5 million dollars right now $2,500 a week? $2,500. $2,500. $2,500 a week for the rest of your life or $1.5 million right now? Ten grand a month? I'm taking $2,500 a week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me ask you this. Is there a particular reason why you took the, you know, uh, ten grand a month over the, uh, you know, one point five dollars right now? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you get that lump sum, whether tax is taken out or not. It's... Uh, a massive, massive shift in your life. I know for myself, there's a lot of financial trauma <laughs> within my family lineage. So if I were to receive that, uh, let's say for example, taxes are taken out. Okay, you're you're looking at eight fifty. Yeah, I'm going bananas. Yeah, but yeah, I know yeah. that if it's coming in, you know, smaller Influence. amounts for the rest of my life. Yeah, then I think there's more of a plan, and you can plan, you know, further ahead, opposed to oh my gosh, eight hundred. I'm getting all my people. We're going e here. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I would, I would take the the twenty five hundred a week. Okay, perfect. Let me so let me ask you this. Uh, you kind of eh, kind of answer a little bit, but. Would your lifestyle change at all from what you do, you know, now in your everyday life to, you know, obviously? No, I'd say I've got a lot of freedom in my okay. life currently as it stands. Um, the really the only thing I put my money into right now is is taking care of, of myself mm -hmm. um, and then into my kids. So, if I were to receive twenty five hundred a week or one point five now, um, maybe I'd buy myself, I don't know, more treatments more ways to be healthy I, nice I, okay. i've traveled a lot i spent seven years over in europe playing uh so i got to travel a lot doing that so traveling yes i love it and i would love to do more of it um but right now i'm, I'm pretty satisfied with where i'm at nice okay okay you, you did answer but i'm, I'm gonna ask the hypothetical 1.5 untaxed oh. hit your bank account today yeah what, what's what's the what's the first move um, probably moving <laughs> out of Cleveland. Uh, not that I don't like Cleveland. Um, I've lived a long time in the cold and I love the cold, but I don't always want to be cold. I would probably take off to, I don't know, Texas, Arizona, okay. certainly not Florida. I don't get down with the humidity. Um, and then also to make sure that I was able to bring my kids, I would also then pay for their mom to, you know, uh, relocate wherever nice. I, okay. wherever we, you know, healthily in a healthy fashion. Okay. Need to. That's awesome. No, that's really cool. That, that's that's really cool. I just uh, the hype. I always you know hypothetical. Um, you know, because I'm just curious on, yeah. on you know what what your thoughts were. It sounds like you're more of a you know it, let's just let's just ride this out. You know, ride this twenty five hundred dollars until the sunset. Yeah, uh, and you know, and again, I've I've had you know lump a lump amount of money given to me in a check like when i first signed with anaheim say signing bonuses man I, I gotta think that was probably a nice nice little payday yeah i remember when i received my first signing bonus and after uh taxes it was still more money than i had ever even known i don't come yeah. from money i've got two brothers two sisters we adopted three cousins so 10 kids and yeah my mom was the only one working so i don't come from money yeah you know um so yeah if i were to receive that yeah i, I just feel like i would subconsciously just kind of go crazy yeah you know and i kind of did when i received my first check from anaheim as well so okay awesome awesome all right so uh moving on next question how uh, this is kind of more of a, a question for you but also just like you know it, we'd love to kind of hear your answer but you know how does having a positive mindset you know 
change your life? Not only from answering how does it for you change your life, but also how does it you know uh, affect other people's you know, lives as well? Yeah, so I would um, start with the the thought, the idea, the understanding that everything is energy. So okay. our, our you know being positive is it's an energy. What yeah. what is that exactly? Okay, so your thoughts are positive. That's energy. Your words are positive. That's energy. Your yeah. actions, your choices, everything's energy. So. With the understanding that I'm able to stop the thoughts that are currently taking place, if they're negative, I can stop them and yeah. then I can choose consciously to put new thoughts in my mind that are going to yeah. better fall in line with what it is that I want for myself and what it is that I want for my life. So yeah, being positive, I mean, we all know we go through stuff and we go through stuff very consistently. If you can have a positive mindset um, going through those situations, if you want to call them slumps or lows or the, the ebbs, mm -hmm. I feel like you're going to be able to get out of those mm -hmm. a lot quicker yeah. than if you stay stuck in those negative thought patterns. Makes you know? sense. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's so most people un unfortunately are unaware of that. Yeah. That fact that they can stop their thoughts. Yeah. Most people think that they are their thoughts, mm -hmm. that they are their body, but you're not. You're the you're the one. You're the awareness yeah. uh, uh, behind the thought. So one one quote is you're not the voice of the mind you are the one that hears it wow. so with that understanding alone whatever it is that you're going through life that you're clinging so tightly to of any negative situations if you can just repeat that to yourself i am not these thoughts i am the one that's aware of them boom instantly whatever it is that you're going through loosens a little bit wow. so then you can see life from a clearer lens opposed to the disturbed lens that so many people view life and reality from wow Wow, that's a lot to unpack, and that's uh, that's that's man, it's, and it's so cool that you kind of talk about you know the aspect of like you know your thoughts don't define you, mm -hmm. right? Like it's it's you know essentially it's how you hear them. Yeah. Um, just like you know when there's you're in a plane or something like that, and you're having a conversation, me and you would have a conversation. There's another conversation going on in the background. You know, mm -hmm. you can either choose to listen to that conversation or just you know kind of be present in your conversation. And I've, you know, I've never really thought about something like that. And that's a really cool aspect to kind of, you know, consider that like, yeah, the thoughts are in your head, you know, but you don't really necessarily have to listen to them. And um, yeah, I mean, I talk about how important mindset is. And, you know, I always kind of say anywhere I go, I, I feel like I'm the hardest worker in the building. Now, is that true? I don't know. But all that matters is I believe that. It needs to be true for you. And that's it, 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 exactly. Yeah. Right? You know, is there you know, a way to prove that? I, I don't know. Right? You know, can you can go apples to apples as far as, you know, I did this today, I did this today. But, you know, when you truly believe that, you know, you're invincible, you're capable of anything, you know, you're unstoppable, right? Um, and that, man, that's just a, such a cool, you know, aspect of, of man, that, that's just, that's well, just really unique. And then also when you think about like your beliefs, you know, that's kind of like the hard drive. You know, mm -hmm. I view humans as we're just computers. Mm -hmm. You know, there's all these robots and everything and AI yeah. and everything coming into our reality. But I think already, we already are robotic. Our yeah. minds are a computer, exactly. you know? So your belief is kind of the hard drive. And from that hard drive, there's gonna be different programs that get installed into your yeah. hard drive. And yeah. what are those programs? They're your thoughts, they're your words, your choices, your actions. And if those things aren't running in accordance with what it is you want in your life, it's not, that we that those are more like the the symptom of yeah. the belief yeah so we always want to attack the symptoms opposed to getting to the root so if your belief isn't that you're the best in the world that mm -hmm. you can be but what, mm -hmm. what do you think your thoughts are yeah. going to be your your words your actions your choices are going to fall in line with that that hard drive you know That's awesome. so it's not reinstalling a new program it's uninstalling the hard drive and reinstalling a new one that starts with belief wow you know that's that's deep man that's that's big, that's big, that's huge. Um, you know, just how you've, and this isn't kind of, you know, dive a little bit deeper into that question, but like, I guess like, how would you coach somebody on that who maybe always has that negative minds, you know, mindset where an opportunity may come and they go into negative, negative, negative. Well, what's the worst that could happen instead of what's the best that could happen? I guess, how do you, how would you coach somebody on to like, getting those kind of thoughts out of their head? So I think so much of our thoughts, they're just, it's different thought patterns. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you're, I would, I would suggest, so the first like 20 minutes, 30 minutes that you're awake, that's when your subconscious mind is the most aware. Okay. And it's your subconscious thoughts that are kind of on autopilot. They're just always going every single day. So if you can give yourself space in those first 20 minutes, 
to hit yourself with as much positivity as possible in terms of your thoughts or your words, you're actually then reprogramming your mind to automatically produce those thoughts wow. throughout your day. But if you're never doing that, then you're always just gonna be a victim to the, the thoughts that are coming and will consistently and continuously come. You know, so the more you do it in that morning, right, how you start your day in those first 20 minutes is gonna set you up for the rest of your day. So wow. if you wake up and boom, instantly pop on your phone, what is it that you're consuming? Wow. Is it negative? Is it positive? Wow. Right? And then you set that down. What's the next thing you're doing? And typically your thoughts of them are going to fall in line with whatever it was that you were just consuming. You know, so get rid of the phone, wake up, move your body a little bit. We always wake up, we're a little bit tired. Mm -hmm. We got stuck energy, tired energy within us, right? We got to move that. And then boom, maybe five minutes of just, I am, I am a powerful person. I am a great person. I am a hard worker. I'm a smart worker. I am love, whatever, you know, it's going to look different for everyone. But again, if you can do that, you're, you're actually reprogramming your mind to automatically produce positive thoughts. And again, if you're not doing that, we know it's mm -hmm. typically yeah. negative. You yeah. know? So one thing I do with some of the, either the players or the people that I work with is giving them a, a practice and it's just positive rewrites. So at the end of your day, look back on the day you had, yeah. what thoughts were the most consistent and what situations did you find yourself in that you deem as negative? Let's write them down and then let's positively rewrite them, whether that's a thought or it's a situation. And how can we see it differently, see it from a positive perspective in, a, in an attempt to make positivity louder? Wow. You know, and, I, and I, it's up to us as individuals to make positivity louder. You know, yeah. there's, there's a lot of negativity going on these days, but there's also a lot of positivity. Yes. And it's yes. just what are you seeing and what you see is always going to match what's going on within you. Wow. Such a game changer because that's, I think. I speak for myself, I can't speak for anybody else, but like, that's the first thing I do when I wake up is I go to this and boom, it's like, here we go again, right? Yeah. You know, and the emails and, you know, uh, you know, and it's just, I think, yeah, that's something I definitely need to change is just taking five minutes to myself and, and you know, just reiterating that, yeah, I'm, I am a powerful per person and, and yeah, just taking a breather. Right? Well, and I think too, like, just imagine how, yeah, like we, most people, we typically get up and we boom, we're just so attentive and mm -hmm. caring about other people. Yes. And what can yes. I do for these people? But I feel like if you want to show up better in the world and be able to be of more service to other people, you have to nourish yourself first. True. And yeah. we've been, we've been programmed to think that that's selfish. Mm -hmm. We need to be more selfless mm -hmm. where I think the more selfish you are mm -hmm. in terms of how you take care of yourself opens the door up for you to be more selfless to others. Yeah. You know, so true. No, it's so true. You're on a plane and, and they go over the safety <clears throat> procedures with, you know, when you put your life vest on, what do they say? Put it on yourself first. Yeah, yeah. And then put it on the, you know, your baby or, you know, your child or the person next to you and whatnot. So, yeah. No, that's, that's really cool. Take right. care take care of number one yeah. because number one's not taken care of. You know, you definitely can't take care of uh, you know, other people. So that's really cool. All right. So uh, moving on, I got another uh, either or question for you. So would you rather go back to freshman year of high school? With the knowledge that you know today mm -hmm. and you know what let's let's you know also piggyback off this and with the skill that you have today or get three million dollars right now oh i'm going back okay i'm going back um i've gotten myself to a deep level of acceptance mm -hmm. um in terms of the decisions i made in my past mm -hmm. <laughs> And I'm at peace with them, mm -hmm. but would I also like an opportunity to, <laughs> to maybe not do the things that yeah. I did? Yeah. Sure. And I feel like if I had this level of, of wisdom, of um, intelligence mm -hmm. and understanding, that I think then I would have had a, excuse me, yeah. again, uh, would have had a career in the NHL. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. But, you know, everything happens for the most perfect reason. Mm -hmm. I was never supposed to be mm -hmm. this person then. Yeah. You know, I had to go through my more trauma in my teenage years and... Mm -hmm. and um, move away from home at a, at a young age of 15 when hell I probably needed love the most yeah. I'm now amongst uh, a group of strangers mm -hmm. when I was going through a lot and mm -hmm. probably just needed mom and dad there yeah. to love me to guide me but mm -hmm. I didn't have that and so it, through that you know it kind of helped me to mature a little bit faster you know um, so I have the ability to kind of just ping pong and go here yeah. and there but yeah I think I answered that <laughs> yeah I, I tell you what um, you know and I know you're you know kind of you know, humble with it, but, uh, you know, it, listen, it, anybody who's never seen you play, I mean, you're a phenomenal hockey player, right? Um, and 
I tell you what, I, 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 I'd get a ticket uh, to watch you uh, with the skills that you have now uh, playing freshman, uh, you know, freshman hockey somewhere. Yeah. So I, I, that, that definitely would be fun to, fun, fun to see. So well, real quick, June 28th, for anybody, anybody here in Cleveland, I know last season I play in a summer pro league still called Three Ice. And last summer we were in Pittsburgh playing. I had probably over 100 people from here in Cleveland nice. go, go out and support. So June 28th, I'll okay, get into Pittsburgh. There you go, Ju Ju June 28th. I, I will say, uh, I, I, I'm not trying to, yeah, that weekend I know because it's right it's a, it's a It's a Wednesday though. Okay, that's yeah. that's right. Okay, uh, the, the weekend after, I'm sorry, I'll be somewhere. But uh, no, that's awesome. And, I, and I'll pivot into that. I mean, I, uh, I watched... Every, I'm not gonna lie, you know, I watched every game and I had it recorded and whatnot. And, you know, when you guys were going to the uh, cities and I, I, you know, when you guys were in Las Vegas and wanted to go, I'm still kicking myself, I didn't go. But, you know, I think I'd love seeing that because I think the sport is, is adapting, mm. right? It, you know, I think when it went from, you know, five on five over time to three on three, a lot of people were disgruntled and you know this takes away from the game but it, you know it makes it I think you know it makes it more exciting for the casual fan yeah. um you know and then with the emergence of three on three I think it's you know I it's amazing right and and obviously I'm not there so I don't know what happens behind the scenes but just from, from the production of it too I mean it's it, it's really cool and, and you know when I say I mean some of the best you know hockey players still you know are playing i mean it is a very high skill level you know type of game and it's a whole different mindset mm -hmm. right i mean some guys who do play five and five professionally i think would struggle in a three on three setting and you know i think you know a player like me you know i never was i never did well with the five on five you know i was more of a you know finesse uh, no hitting <laughs> type player, <laughs> you know, something like this, you know, I had not that anything would have changed, you know, but yeah, you know, something like this would have been great for me. So I just love the adaption of the game. And I, I don't know, you want to kind of talk a little bit more about that and, and, you know, maybe, you know, the opportunity that you got with that. Yeah. So I'd say, you know, you know, when it first started the three on three, you know, you had mentioned that, you know, it takes away from the game or that's perhaps what fans were thinking. But in mm -hmm. my opinion, it's given so much to the game mm -hmm. and, and actually, allowed the game to gather more fans mm -hmm. because yeah. that if anybody it doesn't matter if you're a hockey fan or not mm -hmm. you watch that three on three yeah. it is it is electric yeah oh, it yeah. is it is non-stop you're yeah. not going to see any of the fighters out there you're yeah. going to see yeah. the top players in the world mm -hmm. on the ice for mm -hmm. five minutes yeah. and let's go until, yeah. until yeah. We, somebody scores or we yeah. don't you know um so i know in the league that i play and that's all it is yeah. so the games are 16 minutes two eight minute runtime periods and it's three on three the whole time there's only six players per team plus the goalie so yeah. seven you know so you're going every 30 40 seconds and in my mind like if you're a hockey fan there's nothing to not like yeah the production i i was able to fortunately watch some of the reruns like the next day mm -hmm. cbs sports would, mm -hmm. would play the reruns of our of our games and the production looks incredible yeah you know so the man behind it um E.J. Johnston used to work for the Penguins, created and produced multi-million dollar shows in Hollywood as well. So that's kind of that was kind of his connection to get this into television, you yes. know. And so I know, you know, the two play-by-play -play announcers, they work for the Penguins. The the guy that's on the bench doing mm -hmm. the interviews, he mm -hmm. works for the Kraken. Yeah. So there's, it's a very professional staff and such a big part of if this league is going to succeed or not, mm -hmm. came down to the production. And yeah. I'd say in year one, they crushed it. I would yeah. imagine year two is going to be the same. So yeah. again, you know, three on three hockey. Any, in my opinion, hockey players, elite hockey players are the best athletes in the world. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. no person from any other sport that can come into our sport and play at the same level that they do in their sport. Yes. If you bring up NHL elite athlete, bring him into any other sport, he'll pick it up. Yeah. He'll pick it up very quickly. Yeah. But imagine playing basketball and ice skates, yeah. football yeah, and ice skates, yeah, yeah, soccer. Yeah, it's yeah, just, exactly, it doesn't right. happen. Yeah, you know? no, so true. Yeah, so true. But definitely, you know, you guys check it out. CBS Sports. Yeah, maybe. CBS Sports um, starts June 28th. We'll be in Pittsburgh at Robert Morris University. Last year, we played at the Penguins Arena, and that was nice. really cool. Um, and then it's every every Wednesday, 7 p.m. on CBS Sports. The idea was last year we played on Saturdays, mm -hmm. typically local time, one o'clock, mm -hmm. two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Who's at home? Yeah, you know, yeah. who's coming to watch a brand new league? Yeah, and every town we went to, there was always a festival going on. Mm, so, I see. Okay. so now they wanted year two, the final year of the um, contract with CBS Sports. Let's move it to a prime time slot on a Wednesday night during nice. summer. People are home. Yeah, you know? so, um, so yeah, Pittsburgh. My team's going to Pittsburgh, Grand Rapids. 
and uh, Clarksville, Tennessee. Okay. So there's six events this season. The seventh event will be in Philadelphia where the Flyers play. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, looking to win another championship. Yeah, I, I know, again, you know, being modest again, you didn't talk about how your team won. And I was, I remember watching it live and I was going crazy. I was just so happy for you guys, man, when you guys won it. And it's just, it, it was, you know, really, really cool. And, um, it, you know, shout out to, uh, you know, shout out to my boy Swaggy, Swaggy P. Uh, you know, he didn't make it to the championship, but, you know, I, I you know, follow him. And it's cool too, because like, again, it, you know, there, it's, it's such a cool concept because again, a guy like Swaggy P, a guy... You know, like, you know, hey, Barber, you know, a guy like, I, I'm, I'm not sure if, you know, Nash or Mater or whatnot, but what, what's happening in Bauer and a lot of these brands are really starting to integrate, you know, these, you know, content type creators to, to grow the sport. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, you can look at it, you know, the old timers, you know, you know, Don Cherry would have an absolute fit if he watched what, you know, Swaggy P was doing and, you know, with the Zorro stuff and all that. But again, it's, it's. It's what's getting people to the game. Um, it's what people like to see. Um, it, you know, just from the the Trevor Zegerses to the you know Connor Bedards. I mean, you're, you're seeing this game evolving. And I think you know a couple of years ago, yeah, you know, if one of those guys tried you know quote unquote Michigan. It, you know, it, somebody would try to take their head off. Now it's just it, it's customary, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Kat Johnson just just did it. Now we're we're seeing it. You know two or three times a season. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's a unique, it, it's, it's interesting to see how the, the game is evolving and, and also too how the NHL is going to keep up with that from rule changes to, you know, different things like that. Like I said, the, you're not seeing the George LaRocks anymore. You know, you're, you're, you're still kind of seeing the, um, uh, what, who, who am I thinking of from Minnesota? Uh, Reeves. Yeah. You know, Monster. You, yeah. You know, you're, you're still seeing the Reeves, but look at Reeves game is, is changing, right? You know, he's, you know, he'll stand up for himself, he'll protect somebody, but also, you know, he, he's, you know, ultimately trying to score. He, he's got a job to do. Mm -hmm. He's not just, you know, trying to be an enforcer. So it's, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, okay. What has been your biggest life achievement so far in life? Uh, it's for, yeah, be, becoming a, a father. Okay. You know, yeah, signing an NHL contract was great and going through the adversity that I've gone through in my life is, uh, it's a lot to look back on it. Mm -hmm. If I am struggling, hell, you know, I've, I've made it through 100% of the things that I've gone through in my mm -hmm. life. But yeah, certainly being a father, um, but not just any father, being a conscious father, a mm -hmm. deeply connected father. Yeah. You know, it's um, this is something I haven't shared on any interview or any podcast I've ever done. I didn't have a healthy father growing up, yeah. he was an alcoholic, you know, mm -hmm. and so I didn't have that positivity in yeah. my life and then my mom was always working, you know, mm -hmm. so to be that for my kids is, it's the greatest honor. It's mm -hmm. the great, it's, I cherish it more than anything yeah. in my life and I would uh, do anything for my kids and I feel like a lot of parents say that they would die for their kids. Mm -hmm. That's easy. Mm -hmm. How about living for your kids? Wow. Can you live for them? Can you get wow. yourself to a healthy place and understanding that they're going to follow what you do, not mm -hmm. what you say. Wow. You know, so it's uh, it's deep work. It's the most intentional work that I've ever done in my life. But my kids are my greatest teachers. Wow. As well. Wow. You know, so they're my best friends. They're teachers for me, um, and they have an incredible ability to love me unconditionally. That's awesome. So it's it's been beautiful. That's for really sure. cool. No, that, that's awesome. That's really cool. And again, I'm at, I can't you know really touch on that, but it's. It, it's really cool for you to, it, you can tell how passionate you are about it too, you know, and um, it, it is unfortunate too, because I think, you know, some people don't realize, you know, they are parents and maybe they don't realize like having a healthy child, you, you know, is that a lot of people would kill for. Having children, a lot of people, you know, would kill for. Um, and I always kind of use the analogy, the grass is greener on the other side, right? And you know, I've talked to people like, oh man, you're, you know, you're 34 with no kids. I, you know, I, I can only imagine, you know, I'm like, listen, I would kill the switch and, and, and be in your position and have children, you know, and have a family, right? Um, you know, because I always say the grass is always greener and then you, you know, you go on the actually other side of the grass and you realize, wait a minute, they, they spray painted the grass. This mm. actually isn't really grass. Yeah. You know, this is actually artificial grass, right? So there's always that, you know, give and take, but it, you know, what's really cool that, you know, you are passionate and, and you know, it, there sounds like, you know, they're spitting images of you and that's how you, mm -hmm. you look at it, look at it. And I think that's cool. And again, I would, I can never give parenting advice because again, I'm, I'm, I'm not that, but hopefully, you know, somebody really understands that message and, and understands that. Yeah. I mean, they, we, kids pay attention more than what we think. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, and I use my nieces and nephews a lot and use this analogy that like, whatever, you know, we're all successful on social media, mm -hmm. right? It's very easy just to, you know, post our positive, you know, everything that positive happens. But, you know, one thing I take consideration and my nieces and nephews are, are sitting, you know, standing right there watching me, you know, whether it's, you know, obviously we're on camera now, but when I'm off camera, mm -hmm. am I doing what I need to be doing, you know, in order to, to make them proud and, and in order to be successful and for my future kids as well too because it's what you do you know behind closed doors is what defines you you know as a person um and i i think that's you know so important i don't know if you want to kind of touch on that yeah it's it's um like you said the, the kids they they're, they're paying way more attention um mm -hmm. than we think they are mm -hmm. right of course they're going to hear our words but i know at times i find myself I get lost, and I think this is something that's very common within the parental community, if you want to call it that, is that we get so lost and we cling so tightly to the role of parent mm -hmm. that we can't see our kids for their unique beauty and mm -hmm. their path, right? Yeah. Um, we see them from kind of like what we want for them. Yeah. When, when more pressure we put on them to be who we want them to be, the further we're taking them away from who they actually are, yeah. you know? And so, yeah kids I've, I've found for myself because I am deeply spiritual and I've done a lot of work on myself that I want to always be teaching my kids yeah. you know but I've realized through my parenting journey that at times my kids don't need the next lesson they mm -hmm. don't need the next story from my lived experiences sometimes they just need a friend and they yeah. need me to shut up and just hold space for them to feel whatever it is that they're feeling or so that they can potentially learn the lesson on their own opposed yeah. to me always stepping in mm -hmm. right kind of being that helicopter parent mm -hmm. which i think mm -hmm. I, I struggle with at times especially when it comes to my daughter i love mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. and sometimes my son mistreats her and I, yeah. it triggers me yeah. you know yeah. and i yeah. want to elbow drop him yeah. i'm not gonna elbow <laughs> drop him but i i do you know um so again i i would just say that you know we all a lot of parents say that they don't want their kids to be like them but mm -hmm. then we protect them from the same things that we protect ourselves mm -hmm. from, right? Yeah. They don't eat what we don't eat. They mm -hmm. eat yeah. what we eat. They yeah. listen to what we listen to. And then after 10 years, 15, 20 years, you look and you've got a mini me. Yeah, in exactly. The right. same fears, the same insecurities, yeah. the same depression, mm -hmm. the same anxiety, mm -hmm. the same yeah. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And I don't want that for my kids. Yeah. So yeah. yes, do I want my kids to take on a lot that I've been able to, to, to obtain through my years? Mm -hmm. Yes. I want them to have emotional intelligence and, and understand their mind and their body mm -hmm. and how sacred life is. Yeah. But I also don't want them to go and flourish and bloom yeah. and be unique and perfect as they are currently. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. No, that's really cool. No, that's really cool. And you know, it's funny too, you watch, you know, Tiger Woods son, you know, Charlie and it just they have the same mannerisms, right? Mm -hmm. I mean literally the same mannerisms and just, you know, how they after they swing a golf club and, and it, you know just it, it just really it literally it's his mini me and it's mm -hmm. really cool how you talk about that and yeah hopefully people realize you know and sometimes yeah it, it maybe it, you know it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a mother you know daughter father daughter father son for that person to really you know follow what you're doing mm -hmm. right i mean you know family is is made up in a lot of different ways you know from adoption to you know just a grandmother raising somebody and whatnot and i think you know me you know from you know an uncle's standpoint too like i take into consideration you know what how i talk around them mm. you know and and what i say and what i project to them and different things like that um and i think that's so important to understand right like you know if you're the uncle that they look up to or the aunt that they look up to or the brother that they look up to you know or the grandmother that they look up to you know they are they're gonna follow you mm -hmm. right you know so it's not you know i think sometimes too people think well it's just the parents, right? Well, no, you know, if they're family and they think that you're a big influence in their lives, they're really going to try to fo follow you and follow what you, you know, follow what you do. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, 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 it's tough though, you know, because there's so much going on in the world mm -hmm. today yeah. and there always will be, you know, mm -hmm. to, to keep us distracted from what matters most, yeah. you know, so your typical parent, I'm, I'm fortunate that I've created a life that I don't have to go and do an eight to five job, yeah. right? And then get home and be exhausted. Mm -hmm. So I just throw an iPad in front yeah, of my yeah, kids, yeah, exactly, right? right yeah. Relinquish myself from any actual mm -hmm. parental yeah. duties. But yeah. from my understanding, these kids don't care. Yeah, exactly. They don't care that you're tired. Yes. They want the very best relationship yes. with you. Yes. Do you want it and how bad do you want it yeah. as well? You wow. know, um, it's not enough. Yeah. I coach so many youth hockey players, excuse me. Um, and I see what life is like at home for them based mm -hmm. on how they are. Yeah. And that's not true for every single player mm -hmm. every single time. Yeah. But I'm finding that kids 
have a lot of lack when it comes to being able to be um, in the moment yeah. and follow direction yeah. and go and apply that direction yeah. and stay with me. So many kids are blank staring me because mm -hmm. I feel like they're just staring yeah. mindlessly at an iPad yeah. or at a television. You yeah. know? So the more we can step away from that and step into the connection from mm -hmm. parent to daughter or from parent to son, you're going to, I think, just see an, uh, an increase in kids' ability to take direction and actually hear what it is that we as parents or teachers or caregivers are mm -hmm. trying to get them to want to go and do. But if we get home from work, we're so tired, right? We think that we need to rest, mm -hmm. but how do most parents rest? They rest by turning the TV yeah, on, yeah, exactly. getting on their phone. You're mm -hmm. not resting. Yeah. Go on a walk, get energized, yeah. and then be present with your kids. You know, And that guarantee you that that's what they want more than the the iPad or the, the that's Disney awesome. Plus movie. They want you, yeah. and they want a deep connection with you. That's awesome. That's a, that's such a, an amazing take, too. And you know, I had a brief, you know, I still coach, you know, a little bit and, um, yeah, you know, and not saying that I, you know, I know what the, you know, my, you know, what the home life is, you know, when, but, you know, I get these kids for a certain time, you know, and I have, you know, there's certain things that I don't want them to do. And I don't look at it as just, I'm coaching as a hockey player, I'm coaching as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's one thing that I, you know, try to take pride in, you know, when I was coaching was, you know, Hey, you know, when you come to the rink, you know, you're, Coach Thomas's, you're on Coach Thomas's team, mm -hmm. right? You know, so if you do something, you know, they know who the coach is, mm -hmm. right? And so, but it's tough too from, you know, a, a teacher perspective and a coach perspective, you only have them for that one hour and a teacher perspective, those six, seven hours a day, yeah. right? And then unfortunately they may go home and unlearn everything, mm -hmm. you know, the positive affirmations that you're giving them as children they may go home to an unstable environment where, you know, well, my teacher said I can go to college and, mm -hmm. and maybe that person who's raising them says, no, you can't yeah. um, because nobody in our you know, family has ever done that and we don't have the money to do that. And, you know, it's, it's just so unfortunate mm -hmm. because, you know, kids don't know any better, yeah. right? I mean, you know, they're just such gentle souls and they just don't know the difference, you know, that, well, that's not true, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. it, it's not, but like once you ingrain that in their mind, at such a young age, they believe that. Yeah, yeah. And, and that becomes their belief. Correct. Right? Yeah, right? It, it, exactly. I'm just going to do the bare minimum because I'm not going to college anyway, so therefore yeah. I don't need it. Yeah. So yeah, and it's and it's interesting too when I think about my role as coach. I see myself more as a teacher, mm -hmm. but with the understanding that I do only get them for an hour, mm -hmm. right? I want to make sure as well not knowing what their life is like mm -hmm. away from the rink, mm -hmm. that I am creating a space of positivity, of yeah. love, of yeah. good energy to where yeah. these kids are excited to show yes. up because this might be their escape from a troubled home exactly. life. And I know exactly. that was true for myself. Yeah. Yeah. So I would show up to the rink and if my coach was super negative and screaming yeah. at me yeah. like, like crazy, mm -hmm. this goes from my safe space mm -hmm. of me being able to get out there and express myself and be, yeah. be artistic out on the ice. Yeah. To now, oh, this feels a lot like home, and yeah. I don't want to be here anymore. Exactly, right. And so we, as coaches, we think that these kids are lazy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, work harder. Well, how, what's the energy mm -hmm. that you're bringing into the situation that's going to be conducive to getting these kids to do what it is that you want? But if you're hyper negative and screaming like crazy, mm -hmm. over time, nobody's going to want to be exactly. a part of that. You know, yep. exactly. so. Coaches, can we take a step back and understand that we are so much more than coaches? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. We have the oh, ability yeah. to change the trajectory mm -hmm. in a certain sense of these kids' lives yeah. based on how we are as people when we're around them. Yeah. You know, because again, they might go home and they might be getting abused mm -hmm. physically, mentally, yeah. sexually, mm -hmm. right? They can look back on that coach that was hitting them with positivity, yeah. that was hitting to them with love, and that's what they can anchor into yeah. while they're going through this situation. Yeah. And remember that that there is people out there that can love me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, and it can be more positive for me. And then guess what? They're gonna continue showing up, continue showing up because you're the light for this yeah. child. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. So true. No, that's that's <clears throat> that that's so true. Um, all right. Well, we're gonna transition a little bit. Uh, I have another either or question yeah. for you. So. Would you rather go to a game seven of a Stanley Cup final or hang out with Paul, AKA <laughs> Biz, Paul Biznet for yeah. a week? Oh, geez. <clears throat> game seven Stanley Cup finals? Game seven Stan Stanley Cup finals. 
So I don't exactly know too much about Biz. Okay. I know he's on TV. I know the role he had as a player. I see his energy and I do, yeah. I do enjoy his energy. Yeah. But I guess I don't know enough about him to okay. say, yeah, I'm going to okay. go and spend a week with him. Okay. What if I don't like him? Yeah, true. That's, <laughs> you know? hey, that's, that's, that's true. That's I know true. I'm going to like a Game 7 experience <laughs> yeah. to make a final. There's, there's no doubt about that. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I, uh, let's, uh, I'm going towards the unknown. I'll hang out with Biz. Okay, all right. all right. I like it. I like it. I like it. And I usually don't answer the question, but I would too. You know, and, and I think too, right, like we're in such a, a cultural revolution, a business revolution, a, a – societal revolution right now where you, you look at, you know, we, we look at, you know, Biz, right? A guy, you know, fourth liner, didn't really play hockey a lot, you, you know, played in the NHL and he'll tell you he doesn't have a lot of skills, but look at the business, right? That he was able to create. And I think it's just more of just taking advantage of opportunity, right? Where, again, I don't know when he was kind of started his tweets and, and you know, being funny, like he realized that he would be put in this position where, you know, obviously, he's on NHL and TNT with a, probably a, a crazy contract, and you know has liquor deals, and and probably has you know a, a, you know big deal, uh, you know big deal beer and different things like that. So, but look at what he's done from a business perspective, and I think that's kind of more of why I would love to you know kind of share that week with him. And you know he is this quirky guy, but mm -hmm. he also it, it's you know either you know he's got a really good team, you know, or maybe he is just very business savvy, mm -hmm. you know, and we're just not giving him enough credit. Yeah, I, I, I'd say there's probably so much about him that we just have no idea. Yeah. We know oh, yeah. the, the personality that yeah. he has now on exactly. television and exactly. his Spit and Chicklets podcast yeah. and yeah. everything. Exactly, like, yes. He's clearly got a lot of charisma, uh -huh. you know, he's, he's a handsome man, mm -hmm. right? So they probably want him on television. Yeah, exactly, and he can right? speak well, clearly yes. from watching exactly. the intermission reports, like exactly. he speaks well and he's passionate. Yes. And I think that's what is a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you're going to be good on anything like this or mm -hmm. on television yes. if you've yes. got passion, and energy, yeah. and you, you exactly. have the ability to smile. It, and, exactly. And also, be like have humility as mm -hmm. well. Like if he's wrong, I think he's willing to accept that. Right? Exactly. And right. As it, exactly. Well, you know. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I think that would be. I know what the game seven experience would be like, and I like mm -hmm. to try and live in the unknown because mm -hmm. then who knows what could come from it. That's you know? true, right? Yeah. That, that, no, that's so true. And, and yeah, you know, speaking, you know, from that, I mean. You know, I think also NBA on TNT, you know, Charles Barkley's role, I think that's kind of what they realized, like, hey, we, we have a Charles Barkley mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm, you know, this, yeah. you know, his, their careers weren't the same, you know, but you need that kind of unapologetic, you know, type of person on there, yeah. you know, a little edgy, you know, just because, it, you know, yeah, I mean, honestly, some of the stuff that, you know, Charles says, man, I can't believe, that, you know, he's allowed to say it, but, you know, business is kind of the same way, and and again, I think it's helping grow the sports and, and just, you know, a lot of people like that entertainment because what do most people do when you go to intermission? All right, I'm going to change the channel, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, but it's like, wait a minute, you know, I got biz and they, Wayne Gretzky, are you kidding me? They put Wayne on there, yeah. right? So it's, you know, the game is changing. And I think not only from just a sport aspect, but, you know, from a just all around business, mm -hmm. you, you know, aspect, I think they realize, well, why you know we're trying to grow the game you know itself but you know let's grow our audience and and you know get entertaining you know people on yeah and i would say too a lot of that comes down to the players as well yeah and there's a lot of personality in hockey. oh yeah you know we've, oh, yeah. Been, we've been kind of programmed in hockey to just kind of shut up yeah right just exactly. keep, keep yeah. working yeah right? exactly all about the team 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 mm -hmm. but there's a lot of personality out there mm -hmm. that if we gave and i think that the space is there now mm -hmm. and it's starting to grow mm -hmm. and expand in terms mm -hmm. of hockey and i think the people behind the scenes are understanding that there's a lot of opportunity out there for these hockey players as individuals yeah. to create more of a personality. And I think it's slowly heading in that direction, but I think the NHL is starting to learn a little bit more from the NBA that I believe is more of a, a player first mm -hmm. league. Mm -hmm. NFL, it's more about the league, but mm -hmm. in the NBA, you have such personality. You, you check, you know, as players are walking into the arena, exactly, look at their, right. their outfits. Exactly. And they're starting to do that for hockey yes, now. Yes, exactly. You know, so I think hockey, like you said, it's growing, it's expanding. It's still, you know, not that popular here in America, mm -hmm. certainly here in Cleveland. Yeah. You know, yeah, we've got the monsters and that's great, but you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's heck, it's probably the fifth top yeah. sport in America. Definitely. Soccer is clearly a, a, a past it, you know, yeah, golf, definitely. I mean, heck tennis probably even mm -hmm. is, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it's, it's important for the league to continue heading in that direction. 
and then it's only going to grow. It's only going to expand and then keep going over to Europe to play, you know, those preseason games, yeah, the first exactly. two season, or games of the season, and it's only going to help the, the game to grow. Yeah, I, 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 I can't agree more. I definitely can't agree more. So, okay. So how has uh, coaching changed your life? And it, kind of a two-part question, how has hockey coaching changed your life? And, and I know you, you know, do also life coaching, and, you know, so how has both of those, you know, changed your life yeah so it's interesting when I think about the coaching um, ended my career 2020 even though again this summer I still play but I never ever wanted to be a coach okay I never thought okay I'm gonna finish playing I'm gonna go be a coach there were thoughts that came but I said in my mind I would only coach at a high level mm -hmm. so at the USHL level okay. college okay. pro whatever yeah. now here I am I'm coaching kids that are five years old yeah. <laughs> six years old you know and it's it's uh it's taken me different perspectives to get to the place where I'm at now. Yeah. So I played hockey at, at a very high level for 17 years, mm -hmm. 18 years. So now here I am. I finished my career right where at the beginning of, of everything. And then the rink started opening mm -hmm. up. Now I'm doing private lessons. I'm doing small group trainings. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I had to provide the highest level of practice mm -hmm. possible. So during seasons, my, my partner and I, we go around to different youth organizations here in Cleveland. We help out. You know, these kids, their ability levels are very low. Mm -hmm. And here I am thinking, these kids can hardly skate, but I have to put together an AHL level yeah. practice yeah, for these yeah. kids. Yeah. And so there was so much suffering that took place from that approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's the approach of being a positive male role mm -hmm. model for yeah. these kids, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, and so showing up and I don't care what the practice looks like. I'm going to want every one of these kids to know that I care about yeah. them as humans mm -hmm. more than I do about hockey players yeah. because hockey is going to end at some point, yeah. you know? Um, so that's, that's allowed me to kind of be happier in life, nice. right? There was, there were certain times when I would show up to the rink with the old approach and I would sit in the in the parking lot, having no idea what practice I was going to run, mm -hmm. no idea what drills I was going to run. I was screaming, I would cry, mm -hmm. I would have so many thoughts come up of inadequacy. Yeah, I have no value in this world. Yeah, right. And it was all because of me. Yeah. I was suffering when it wasn't necessary. I was yeah. putting it on myself. So now with this different approach, man, as my life, I feel like in all areas is kind of just flourishing as well. Like things are coming to me. I've, did a lot of work in the past and now things are starting to manifest, you know? Um, so, you know, that has certainly helped me to, as I said, to be happier, to be feel more fulfilled in that sense. And what was the other? Oh, and then how, hold on. Yeah. So yes, I get a lot of energy now um, coaching on the ice because of the approach I take. But in terms of life coaching and mental health coaching, that will forever be number two on my passion list. Yeah. Number one is being a father. <laughs> number two is helping people and guiding people back to themselves. Yeah. I think, um, I did talk therapy for three years. That was incredible for me to make pass of my childhood trauma and everything, but my subconscious mind, my thoughts and everything, my preferences in life mm -hmm. were still calling the shots, yeah. right? It wasn't until I tapped into self-healing and nervous system regulation and breath work and cold therapy and sauna and working out and blah, 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 blah. Um, to where now all of the things that I provide with my clients, it's again, I'm just giving them tools mm -hmm. to guide them back to themselves yeah. to where after a year of working with me or six months, you don't need me anymore yeah. because I've provided you with the tools to again, navigate life on your own. Yeah. And now I can just be here for support That's for awesome. gentle reminders here and there, you yeah. know, but in the end, as individuals, we have all the answers already. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. we just need somebody to guide us back to them and how yeah. to find them. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's, um, that will that will always trump the hockey aspect, uh, certainly. Because again, these hockey players at some point they're going to be done, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But the people I help outside of the game, yeah, this is forever. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? So it's uh, it's a it's a beautiful thing, and it's one I'm I'm truly grateful for. That's amazing. You know, that's an amazing take. As far as you know, that's one thing too that you know I well two things, I you know I always say you know as long as they're coming back. Right. Like, you know, if they come back the next year, I did my job, mm -hmm. uh, you know, essentially. Right. Just because they had fun, you know, they, you know, they're, they're passionate about it. And, um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, you know, it, coaching, you know, any sport, right. Just because, you know, kids, they're not your kids. Mm -hmm. Right. Except usually, you know, um, sure. You know, it's obviously times people keep coach their own kids, but not their kids. Right. So, you know, how, you know, and obviously at the discipline, some of these kids are not paying attention. If they're shooting pucks when they should be shooting pucks, they're not paying, you know, they royally mess up a drill. You know, when literally you said, hey, everybody, you know, pay attention. Obviously, I'm, I'm starting to get triggered here. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, so it, it's, it, it is interesting, you know, as a coach and, you know, seeing these kids progress and, and, 
be. But yeah, you know, I, you know, when I was coach, you know, still do coach, you know, I put together drills and yeah, I'm just like, man, like I'm not seeing the change I need to see fast enough. Therefore, should I be doing a different drill? Mm. I'm always constantly thinking like, is this parent judging me because, you know, the kids were in week three and I still have kids who were struggling to stop it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, you know, do understand that aspect. But one thing I, I did, you know, take into, you know, I have taken consideration and I, you know, I was actually talking to somebody who I knew before and she was a social worker and she was the first social worker to go to this school. She felt like she wasn't doing enough. Mm. You know, and I let her know, hey, listen, you have to think about this. They didn't have a social worker last year. Whatever you're doing, like, although you may feel like not enough, whatever you're doing is 10 times more than what they had last year. Right. So the fact that you're even here present listening to them is, is you're giving them so much more than that. And I have to start thinking that way with being a coach yeah. is, you know, you just being here on the ice and even if they're just like skating around is way more, you know, than, you know, you not being here. Right. 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 So I do, I struggle with that too, you know, just as far as, you know, can I, you know, can I be doing more? Um, should I be doing more? Um, you know, and just, you know, I have got some, you know, thank yous from, you know, parents. Hey, I know you don't have any kids out here. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate you coming just because. 90% of the people who are on the ice do have children in the yeah. program and you're one of the ones who don't, yeah. really, you know, and, um, so yeah, and I kind of shifted my mindset of, okay, I have to start thinking that way, you know, I'll never be able to put together a perfect practice plan, mm -hmm. right. um, you know, just get them on the ice, get their feet moving, get the hands moving, you know, and, and create an environment where they're, like you said, they're having fun, they feel, you know, loved and, and, you know, and, and essentially just wanting to come back so yeah that's yeah cool. yeah for sure and i think in terms of that lady that you were talking about right like she was probably suffering a lot like thoughts of inadequacy or yeah. not feeling yes. worthy or capable of doing whatever it is that she's doing but in the end what are those what yeah is that exactly right? just thoughts yeah exactly you know? right. and exactly they're always going to come no mm -hmm. matter i've done i've been working on myself now for six years i haven't escaped any of the negative mm -hmm. neurosis that comes into my mind i just simply have a different relationship with it now and then the understanding that i can change it right yeah, exactly. so that that still comes up for me like what in the hell am i doing who am who am i yeah what exactly. what value do i provide to exactly. this beautiful world but again i can either choose to believe those thoughts right or i can choose to challenge them yeah. where does this come from where does this belief come from mm -hmm. where is the truth in this and you'll typically find that there is no truth in the Bull crap thoughts that are just automatically coming yeah. all day long, but most people don't give themselves the, the opportunity to challenge them, and so then they just needlessly suffer true. each day. You know, no. so true, so so true. I like that. All right, uh, so five years from now, in a perfect world, what goals would you like to be working on? What goals would you like to have already accomplished five years from now? Uh, five years from now, I will have. I wouldn't say, you know what, yeah, why not go, I will have completely taken over in terms of any type of mental performance coaching in hockey. Nice. Um, I feel that the approach I take is going to be the approach mm -hmm. and I'm kind of ahead of the curve. That's awesome. I've worked with sports psychologists in hockey during my career. I think they're answer, asking the wrong questions mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot of athletes out there that need help, yeah. that need oh, yeah. guidance. Yes. Right, and it's fascinating. I was talking with an, uh, a player that played here, mm -hmm. um, plays in the NHL, and I was just curious, like, what, what are the protocols, what do the teams look like in terms of having somebody for the player to talk to? And I won't share his name and what mm -hmm. team he played for, yeah. but he said he, his team, his first couple of years there, they didn't have anybody. Mm -hmm. Then they brought somebody in, but it wasn't confidential. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the players could go in there and speak to whoever this person was, but then that person could go and take it to the coach, to yeah. the GM, yeah. to the owner, yeah. to the... In a, in a culture that's already yeah. maybe toxic to yeah. a certain degree, yeah. who, what players, knowing that, is yeah, going to yeah, go exactly, and knock on right. that yeah, door? Yeah, exactly. You know, right, so yeah. so many of these players, I feel like they need somebody outside yeah. of the team, yeah. right, to fully open up, yeah. right? But um, and I, I believe heavily in the work that I do, um, and I think I'm close to having like a breakthrough. That's awesome. So yeah, working with NHL players is, is the ultimate goal there. Um, but to just continue on, on the path that I've been on, um, continue showing up uh, in a way that I think is, is um, good for my kids. Mm -hmm. I, there was a different word there, but good mm -hmm. just came out. But yeah, just continuing to be that, that beacon of, of hope, of light, of love, you know, continue sharing my story. Um, I, at times the thoughts come in that I need to have my own thing. Mm -hmm. I do on ice skills coaching. 
It's my buddy's business. I'm kind of his right hand man. There's a guy I work with up in Canada for the mental stuff. It's it's his thing. I'm just a big mm -hmm. part of it. So. Mm -hmm. My mind plays tricks on me at times, saying that the only way you can be successful, the only way you can be masculine is to have your own business. Yeah. And I just think that that's kind of crap mm -hmm. because I have a lot of freedom in my life and mm -hmm. I am a great role model for people and that is success in yeah. my mind. That's awesome. So five years from now, I'll be working with NHL players and um, continue to live a life of abundance. Yeah, no, and uh, I forget who the goalie was. I want to say played for Vegas, you know, during the... Uh, you know, when they were playing Flurry. in the bubble. Um, and he, he voiced how, like, hey, like... Oh, Robin we're, Leonard. Yeah, yep. we're, we're, you know, in hotel rooms, you know, for three weeks, a month at a time with, you know, again, no contact, no physical contact with the outside world. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we need something to change here. Yeah. It, you know, like, and, yeah, and I think that was kind of the first time the NHL probably took a step back and it's like, we need to change something, yeah. you know? Um, and I know it's, you know, from an individual organization standpoint, um, you know, and obviously each organization is ran differently. And I, I can only go off of what I see, you know, with, with what's put on TV. And I know Boston, you know, does a really good job with culture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you, you talk, I mean, it's just, it seems like, you know, they, they have the show behind the B and it and you goes kind of in depth, but it, it just, it's really big with culture. And I'm sure all of the, you know, NHL teams, again, this is the only one that just televises yeah. it, right? But, you know, it is so true. And, and I'm, you know, I don't know what's going on now as far as what they have to offer. But yeah, I think, you know, as this, you know, these conversations are had more and more, they're, you know, instead of have, you know, had behind closed doors as it makes its way to, you know, this, I think, yeah, we're going to see a wave of this, mm -hmm. you know, and I think a lot of players aren't afraid to speak up now because yeah. now it's like, oh, wait, you're thinking the same thing as me, you yeah. know, and we also forget too. I mean, yes, you know, they, they make a lot of money, but like, you know, just imagine, you know, you're playing a pickup, you know, hockey game or a pickup basketball game, you know, and you're playing to 21 or, you know, you're playing, you know, posts or, you know, you're playing just whatever and you give up, you know, the, you don't score, you give, you know, you have a giveaway. But you come home to 5,000 comments or DMs that you're terrible, you know, you need to be traded, you know, you're overpaid, you're, I mean, that's going to take a toll on any, I, I mean, you know, I know the mega players like LeBron and, and people like think, you know, people like that, you know, think that way. But like, you know, I, here's the thing, you know, in college, I was on the bubble player, right? Like, I was, you know, a healthy scratch one game I was in. So like, you know, playing with that tight stick was very easy because like, if I miss a pass, does this mean I'm not going to play again? And it's just, you know, it's just how it is, right? In hockey, right? Like, just the best players play. But, like, I couldn't imagine that from a, this is my life. Mm. This is my paycheck. Like, you know, because I gave up that goal, because I, you know, maybe made, you know, not the best play, am I going to get set back? Mm -hmm. You know, or am I going to get traded? Or am I going to get released or anything like that? So... And I think, like, we don't take them, and don't be wrong, like, we, you know, we put a lot of these guys on, you know, this high, we hold them to a high standard because they do make a lot of money, but also at the same point in time, too, you know, they're, they're paid, you know, for a particular reason, you know, they, they put, you know, people in seats, um, you know, but we don't talk about that aspect of you just missing a backdoor, you know, goal or, you know, unfortunately, you know, not stopping a two-on-one or a one-on-one. -on -one. And you coming home to, you know, 5,000 DMs of, you know, your, you know, inadequate in life. Mm, yeah, it's, 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 it's very unfortunate. It's not surprising to me that mm -hmm. people get on their keyboards and, and mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. But in the end, you've got players that make 50 million around yeah. the world, right? Yeah. And Messi's and yeah. Ronaldo's and the mm -hmm. guys in the NFL and the NBA. Like, okay, take the money away. What yeah. are they? They're still human. Yeah, exactly. Right? right? With yeah, all exactly. of their previous life experiences exactly, right? held within their body. Yeah. Right? And for any of these fans to think that these players are going out there with the intent to suck, yeah. to make mistakes, you're, you've never played the game. Yeah. Yeah. You've never played the game, right? These players, I've had it in past, right? I played over in Europe for seven years. The last three years of my career, I was going over for nine months at a time without my kids. Seasons are long, right? Mm -hmm. My teams would sometimes be on the bubble of making the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, it's like, I, I don't want to make the playoffs. Yeah. I yeah. want to get home to my kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But as soon as I get onto the ice, mm -hmm. that inner competitor mm -hmm. kicks in mm -hmm. and I want to win the game yeah. and I don't want to suck and I don't want to make mistakes. Yeah. So it doesn't matter, yeah. right? As soon as we're in the field, 
that 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 inner flame yeah flickers yeah burns yeah hot yeah. you know yeah. so it's 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 again all of that noise it's just noise mm -hmm. but it's all of it is just projection mm -hmm. those yeah. five thousand dms if those yeah, people yeah. were in a good place in their life they would set, maybe still send a message, but it mm -hmm. would be positivity. Exactly. It's right. all negative yeah. and it's just a reflection yeah. of that. Oh, yeah. So players, not just in hockey, in all sports, you have to have the ability to A, remember to not watch mm -hmm. the news. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. read the newspaper clips. Don't read the DMs, mm -hmm. the tweets. But then if you choose to do, please remember that anybody's opinion of you, regardless of who that person is, it's just a reflection exactly. of how they view themselves. Exactly. You know, so... But it's, but it's a challenge because if you don't have that understanding and that deep knowing, you take everything personal. Exactly. And one thing I use with the people I work with is that if they don't know you personally, mm -hmm. you owe it to yourself to not take it personal. Yeah, exactly. you know? Wow, that's um, huge, yeah. Because again, like for, for me, if I casted a judgment onto you, mm -hmm. I don't know too much about you. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what you've gone through yeah, in your yeah, life yeah. and the, the, you know, the mistakes you've made or the uh -huh. good things you've yeah. made. So what does it matter what yeah, I think yeah. about you? Yeah. You know, like... And it's the same thing for me. I've been through a shit storm in my life. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to come along that knows 0.01% yeah, of my life, exactly right. you are irrelevant yeah, in yeah. my journey. You that's know? awesome. Dude. That's so cool to, you know, yeah, just cancel out the noise. Who cares, right? I mean, listen, everybody's always going to have an opinion of you and, and, it, and it doesn't matter, right? You know, um, and it's just, you know, we're in cancel, you know, culture right now where, you know, it, I mean, look at, you know, Mr. Beast, right? You know, he's a big one, that an advocate that I follow, and he's a big YouTuber who, I mean, does, um, just gives away tons and tons of money. You know, his claim to fame was he gave, gave away like $10,000 to somebody just randomly, mm -hmm. right? And he's, he gives away hundreds of thousands of dollars now in jets and different things like that that he gives away, but people still talk negative about him. You know, when he, what was it? He went and cured, I don't even, I forget what he did. He built like, like a thousand homes, something just like incredible, mm -hmm. right? And just... Well, I don't understand why he had to, you know, broadcast that or something. You know, right. it just just something, right? Yeah. You know, and it's just like, listen, it doesn't matter. I always say, you know, people always, you know, figure out a way to play at Disney World, right? It's just, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, listen, if you, if you go looking for dirt, you're going to find it. You know, and if you look for something to complain about, you always will find something to complain about. But those type of people will always be just life suckers. And I try to not... A, focus my energy and not even be around those people. Oh know? my gosh, yeah. So. And then with that understanding is also the understanding that the conversation that you have with yourself, mm -hmm. right? That's the noise you need to be listening yeah, to or exactly. like double downing on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Double downing is that what it is now? <laughs> but making sure that you get that right. What's the relationship that you have with yourself? Because if that, those two things are strong, yeah. the conversations you have with yourself, the relationship that you have with yourself, if that is strong, mm -hmm. the outside noise, it, it, it truly just becomes so irrelevant. Yeah, you exactly. have a deeper kind of view of it and understanding into mm -hmm. it. And then you can also take time, right, to be introspective. Okay, when was the last time I felt very negative? How mm -hmm. did I see the world yeah. then? It yeah. it, right? When was the last time I was feeling so much love and exactly. so much energy? The outside world matched that, yeah. you know? So just always giving yourself time and space to just take that step back. If that's daily or if that's every other day or weekly, whatever, mm -hmm. we need to be doing more of that, yeah. right? We need more perspective shifts within each individual. And the more I feel that individuals are willing to do that, you're gonna see a lot more healing and a lot more love in this world. You know, too many people aren't doing enough work on themselves. And so that's, this is the world we, we live in, right? Yep. It's a product of yep. each individual and where each individual globally is at, True. you know? So it's like the collective, in my mind, we're all one. True. We're all one. Mm -hmm. So anytime you cast judgment or put negativity onto another person, it's affecting the whole world, Yeah. you know what I mean? But the more you heal, you're healing the world as well. So sure. yeah, no, no, <laughs> no. That's that's an amazing perspective and definitely a, an amazing take. Okay, uh, transitioning back a little bit. All right. So, would you rather have <laughs> one million dollars right now or make a dollar eighty-five every minute for an entire year? Where did you come up with this? Dollar <laughs> eighty-five. Dollar eighty-five a minute for a whole year or one schmill right now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with you know what this time I'll go with the mill <laughs> okay. one month okay. sometimes. All right, baby. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, you know, so I know you kind of touched on it a little bit, but you know, again, a million dollars transferred into your bank account right now. Uh, you know, what is what's 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 the move? Um, probably telling my kids that they're not going to school for the rest of the year. Okay, giving their mother fifteen grand, and then my kids and I are gonna go to Finland for two months. Nice. 
Nice. Uh, my son was born was born in Finland. And okay. It's my favorite country in the world, and I've got a lot of support over there. I would move, I would move there now. Yeah. Okay. Take these headphones off and <laughs> go to the airport and move there now. It's just not an option for me quite yet. But yeah, I uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time in Finland. Um, I don't. I, I mean, I don't know. Buy my kids some some new clothes. Yeah. Um, new shoes. Nice. We'd go out to sushi. Maybe. Okay. You know, I don't, I, again, not not so much would change. Would yeah. it would it create a, a sense of freedom in a, mm-hmm. in a way? Of course, mm-hmm. but that would be short lived, and mm-hmm. I would be right back to yeah. who I am on the day to day. Nice. Know? So nice. Okay. No, that's uh, I like it. No, it's cool, and it's funny. You just go straight to your kids. Mm-hmm. You know that yeah. that's it. You know where again, I, I'm at a different point in my life, so I'm you know straight to you know quote unquote my baby real estate right mm-hmm. so it's like okay this is going into properties i know what i'm buying and everything's like that but it's just it's so cool and that's why i'm so excited for it because it, it's probably you know before your kids it's probably obviously something else yeah yeah it, you know um well it's funny when i think back to before having kids when i played here for the monsters in, in 2011 our assistant coach he was also the gm of the team every single day we're warming up players are warming up here he comes in locker with this coffee boys no better feeling than being a parent. And here I am, young, naive, twenty-two yeah. years old, thinking, "Coach, like, come on!" Like, yeah, yeah, there's so exactly, much right? out there. Yeah, and, exactly. Like, and then now being a parent, yeah. I, I clearly understand, <laughs> and there truly is nothing better. So uh, I hope awesome. you get the opportunity one day, brother. Yes, hey, I, I'm, we're, we're working on it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is we're, we're wrapping up here. Um, so. This is kind of a couple part question and, and feel free to kind of answer it how you'd like, but you know, what's your best life advice for somebody younger watching and also your younger self. And another part to that is, you know, would you mind sharing some life advice for, you know, younger hockey players, you know, just play athletes in general. Yeah. Maybe watching this. Yeah. So for the, for the first part, I would say for myself at younger ages, because I had no identity, I had no idea mm-hmm. who I was. I got lost in people pleasing, mm-hmm. um, and I got lost in being cool. Okay, I got lost in being cool opposed to being good. Yeah. So when I get outside validation, mm-hmm. right? When my teammates would call or text and say they wanted to hang out with me, like that made me happy. Yeah. Right. So if they didn't want to hang out with me, or if they didn't want to party with me, mm-hmm. then my identity went into not feeling good enough. Yeah. Right. And so I would say, yeah, just get lost in being good, doing the right things and doing the right things consistently opposed to trying to be cool. Cause I found when I tried being cool, I lost myself. I would say things that didn't align with who I am. I would do things that didn't align with who I am. And I was mm-hmm. just kind of lost in a storm, yeah. you know? So stay focused on yourself. Okay. Be, awesome. be good. Don't be cool. And it's not that you can't you know, I think you understand what I'm yeah, saying. You're yeah. being cool, people pleasing, mm-hmm. always saying yes when you want to say no. Stay, stay in in your truth. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and then in terms of hockey players, I would say um, while you're in the experience, this can be one of many. But while you're in the experience of of the game or the practice or the gym, you owe it to yourself to be as positive as possible, understanding that everything is energy, and if you make a mistake in practice in the game, maybe you don't do the extra rep in the gym, you get hypercritical of yourself, your energy levels are dipping, and then what do you think your next rep is gonna be like, your next shift, right? It's gonna be, it's gonna match that, yeah. you know? So while you're in the experience of that hour, hour and a half, hyper, hyper focused on being as positive as possible so that we can keep our energy levels high, um, and then save that inner critic, right, for, for after the event, after the experience. Um, Emotional control would be one that I would highly suggest for all people Mm -hmm. to get um, comfortable with, but certainly hockey players, because I think there's a lot of leaking of energy. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, if they make a mistake, they go back to the bench, they slam the door shut, right? They, their body language is poor. They, 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 you know, slash the stick on the boards and that's just energy, right? And Mm -hmm. then the thoughts are going to match that, you know? So the quicker you can get your mind working for you, uh, the, the better off you're going to be in life because right now there's way too many people that are, are victims to their, their mindset and they're abused yeah. right from just their mindset. So um, getting yourself to a place to be able to change that and then take control of your life is, is yeah. going to be ultra important. No, that's wow. You know, such, uh, you know, so much to unpack there and just such a great answer um, to, you know, controlling your emotions, you know, even still too, you know, I'm freaking, you know, 34 years old mm-hmm. and I'm still, it, you know, and it just, you know, a couple couple weeks ago, you know, at the end of the game, like two, three seconds left, uh, you know, not, uh, you know on, the, on the clock and 
whatever reason puck went to a player, you know, player shot in the net, uh, you know, you know, and then I just, I, 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 I go to red, you know, yeah. I go to, you know, seeing red and it's like, the, you know, you take a step back. It's like, what do you, like, regardless of if he shot that puck or not, what's going to change, you know, what has, what changed in your life? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Yeah. Right. And, you know, argue with the player, you know, obviously we know it's probably an unwritten rule, you know, right. But again, like I kind of, you know, got down on myself, like, why are you upset about this? Mm-hmm. You know, like, okay, you know what happened, right? Maybe say something to him, but, you know, to react the way I reacted, you know, obviously, you know, wasn't happy about it, but, you know, so it's definitely a change I need to make in my life. And that kind of, that was probably my moment where I'm like, all right, yeah, like this is, like, it's not that serious, right? Yeah, yeah. It, you know, and, and who knows? And, and again, like an unwritten rule, right? Like, again, it's literally an unwritten rule. Some players don't know about that, you know, exactly. type of things. You know, exactly. just, I mean, granted, we both know, right? Like somebody runs into a goalie, it, you know, common sense kicks in, you know, yeah. you're not, we all know not to do that, but, you know, shooting a puck after the whistle, right? Like, again, you're not supposed to do that, but yeah. some, you know, players do that. I'm mm-hmm. sure you've, you know, uh, you know, through your hockey career, things have, you know, happened, you know, it's an unwritten rule and it's like, man, you know, maybe I've, you know, didn't react the, the best way I should have, you yeah. know, to that because I don't know, um, you know, so it's just, but, you know, controlling your emotions, it definitely is, is something that I can definitely understand just because, yeah, even driving, right. Oh, you, you know, man. I mean, you know, man, I, I keep, I, I keep referencing this book and I can't remember what it was, but, you know, I try to listen to, you know, at least one book a month and it just talks about, you know, don't get upset when somebody does something negative to you. It just look at it, you know, why did that person potentially maybe do something negative to you? So it's somebody cuts you off. It's like, yeah, they do that because maybe they're in a hurry. Maybe they're going to the hospital because, you know, they're, this is the last time you get to see an aunt, you know, mm-hmm. or, you know, somebody made a mistake and, and, you know, don't go down on them. Just, you know, help them out. Maybe they just don't know. Yeah. Or maybe that's how they were taught. Yeah. So. Yeah, but if the if the people outside of us or the situations, the experiences we find ourselves in, if they cause disturbance within you and it mm-hmm. cause you to be angry, mm-hmm. that's a reflection of you. Yeah. So I think all too often, especially in relationship with with a significant other, right, mm-hmm. or not even it doesn't have to be a, like uh, a relationship, an intimate relationship. Mm-hmm. It can be a brotherhood, yeah. right, or yeah. a coworker or a boss, whatever. Yeah. Somebody says something to us that upsets us. We instantly either want to attack or try and analyze yeah. what they said or what they did, opposed to okay, what is this revealing about me? Exactly. Right? The external situation happened. There's been a shift of energy within me. (laughs) What is this revealing about me? Because, you know, I know anybody watching this knows that externally, there's always going to be the next thing. The words are going to be spoken. The situation is going to happen. That's going to cause this to shift. Mm -hmm. We get lost in trying to manipulate that. We need to start understanding this. So that when that situation does happen, okay, boom, I can anchor into something. Yeah. deeper and yeah. stronger that's going to keep me in the moment opposed to this happens i get lost and now i'm out of the moment and now i'm just in a reactive state a subconscious state oh, yeah you know um so i would i would suggest to analyze yourself more opposed to why they did what they mm-hmm. did or said what mm-hmm. they said because yeah. you in, in truth unless they tell you it's all speculation exactly right you, you know yeah. yeah story creating yeah that's going to match you yeah exactly not match right? the truth yeah it's so true so, so true. <clears throat> All right. So wrapping up here, any uh, messages or anything like that? You, you know, any final thoughts you wanted to kind of share? Yeah, I would suggest, highly suggest for everyone that isn't on a path of healing, of becoming a better version of themselves to, mm-hmm. to start now. Yeah. Don't wait for catastrophe to strike Ooh, before nice. initiating change within your life. I don't care who you are out there. We can all do something differently that's going to help us to lead a healthier uh, in more abundant life, but I think all too often, and this is true for myself, I'm speaking from experience. I waited subconsciously for the catastrophic event to happen for me to realize, holy, sh- holy crap, like something's off here, yeah. you know? So I had a, a, two years of an experience, consistent experience as a child from the ages of five to seven, out of my control, mm-hmm. that was always going to be happening. I'm actually grateful for those experiences because now I can openly talk about them. My f- in my adult life, my first catastrophic event was me cheating on my then wife, her finding out a week later, boom, instant ownership. I, I understood then that the choices I'm making in my life are affecting those outside of me, close to me. Wow. And then the second um, catastrophic event in my adult life was her seven years later wanting to divorce me as I'm over in Finland by myself wow. without her and my kids. Yeah, That That's turned tough. me within and understanding that I don't want another situation outside of me Mm -hmm. to make me feel internally what that one choice did wow you know so then 
opened me up. And so I'm forever grateful for her for making that decision. It's yeah. actually interesting if you're okay with me diving into this really quick. Yeah. Yeah. That was, um, we had just finished the season over, over in the Czech Republic. I struggled uh, on a personal level, uh -huh. hockey wise. I didn't uh -huh. have the awareness back then to leave it at the hockey ring. Yeah. So I took yeah. it home with me. Yeah. And now I'm bringing my misery from the hockey rink into my, my yeah. personal life. Yeah. And it was terrible. And so she had kind of called me out and said, Hey, we came here for you. We mm -hmm. need, we need yeah. more from you. Yeah. I didn't know how to do more then mm -hmm. or actually do less. Yeah. And then the next summer she goes, I'm not coming to Europe with you. So you need to make a choice. Go to Europe by yourself without me and the kids mm -hmm. or stay home and get a normal job. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell that looks like. Yeah. So I yeah. went back over to Europe. Yeah. Um, and as I was packing that summer, we were always left in July. I was packing motivational books, sports mm -hmm. psychology yeah. books. And then I came across a book that wasn't mine that she had bought for herself. Uh, it's called The Untethered Soul. I would suggest anybody out there to buy that book and read it very intentionally and slow. Uh, so that you can process everything. But anyhow, she bought it for herself, never read it. I looked at it, didn't read anything about it. Just mm -hmm. said, ah, maybe, maybe, what mm -hmm. if? Yeah. Throw it in my bag. She wants to separate me, our divorce. Mm -hmm. Took me about 10, 10 days to kind of regain my focus or mm -hmm. the ability to meditate again. Yeah. And that was the first book I picked up. So yes, yeah, she bought it for herself then. Mm -hmm. But in hindsight, she bought it for me. Yeah. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I'm forever grateful for cheating on her. I'm forever yeah. grateful for her um, wanting to divorce me yeah. because those two situations opened up the path for me to be introspective and to self heal and, nice. and heal internally. Nice. That's well, thank you for sharing that. You know, I know it's, you know, it's tough for, you know, people to, you know, guys in general just open up, you know, about different things like that. So, um, all right. And then if anybody wanted to, I'm not sure if you're, uh, you have obviously your social media but if anybody wanted to you know connect with you on social media yeah i'm not very active on on facebook okay. uh but you can find me on there jacob newton j-a-c-o-b newton like isaac just a little bit smarter than he is <laughs> and then uh on instagram jacob dot newton five perfect um so yeah you can find me on there and uh reach out if you'd like if you need any guidance need any help or if you know of anybody that does reach out, we can get on the phone and see, see what it's all about. I, I, I worked with a former Secret Service agent. Uh, he worked under Obama and saw things in his life and has seen things in his life that I'll never see. He reached mm -hmm. out to me and said, I want to start working with you. And awesome. so much doubt came in because mm -hmm. I'll, I've never seen those things. How can I yeah. help him? But yeah. we dove in and uh, to get the messages from him that I'm receiving now, it's, it's unbelievable. That's you know, so I have full confidence in my ability to help really anybody on, on the planet. It's amazing. And, uh, hey, you gotta, you know, kind of get started somewhere. And yeah, I think, you know, you touched on the, you know, uh, put it proactive versus being reactive, you mm -hmm. know, a, a traumatic experience to, to not, you know, start that process, mm -hmm. you know, you know, right. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, man, I, you know, I wish I would have reached out more, right. Yeah. Well, you know, you can start now, you yeah. know, um, so that's cool. Yeah, and I, and I would say as well for men, you know, you kind of touched on it um, earlier, two males coming together and, and mm -hmm. having these types of conversations. It's been frowned upon for men to speak. It's always mm -hmm. been, the status quo has always been suck it up, move on, let yeah. it go, go yeah. work out, yeah, yeah. puff your chest out, drink the beer, mm -hmm. right? But I need men, more men to understand the strength it takes to, mm -hmm. to show your emotions. Yeah, exactly. Um, but as men, we don't want to reside there. We don't mm -hmm. want to live in that feminine mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. right? You can feel it, mm -hmm. but then we got to have the ability to move on because yeah. that's what we as, as men need to be doing, exactly. right? being the leaders in that regard let the women feel their emotions that they're going to feel it and they're always going to feel we as the men need to be grounded in our truth so that they can they have the freedom to express yeah and you'll find that more women i don't know how i got here but more women will feel safe and comfortable around you the more grounded you are within that's yourself awesome. no, that's so true no, that's amazing amazing all right well i, I want to thank you guys for making it this far i can't thank you enough because that was an amazing, amazing podcast, and I think a lot of people got value, should have, you know, gotten value out of that, and yeah, you know, ultimately, you know, don't, you know, talk to people about how you feel, you know, if you, if, you know, maybe you do have some thoughts of, you know, you're not enough and whatnot, and hey, I'll tell you, listen, you know, you are, and, and ultimately, one thing that I always kind of share with everybody is, you know, you have an idea, you have a, a vision, you have something, just get started, right, jump off that cliff, who knows, maybe you'll fly, right? you know, when I, it's funny, I actually still got to do a video on it, but I started, you know, kind of this journey, you know, October, which is like October 1st, you know, and just for, for me to get to where I am today, just with the podcasting, you know, 
connecting with you on a you know a deeper level it's it's you know again it started from an idea you mm-hmm. know of literally i have in a not a journal but um like a, almost like a daily planner i just put you know, like what i you know what i should be doing for the day yeah. you know it's it, it, like a task list i should say and literally the task you know for that day says change your life mm-hmm. and that was it that's literally all i put it's like you know wake up tomorrow change your life and, and so get started and it's really cool as far as it you know the um, Secret Service agent, you know, reached out mm-hmm. to you, right? Mm-hmm. And just not saying, hey, I don't have enough knowledge or, you know, expertise in this field to take you on. It's like, hey, listen, it, you know, um, I am enough, mm-hmm. it, you know, yeah. and, I, and I know that I can help you. Because again, if that person took the time out of their day to reach out to you, trust me, they, they saw something in you, yeah. you know, that, that really struck the chord. So that's awesome. Yeah. So, and I think through that, you know, there was uh, obviously some, something that I was putting out resonated with them, right? Correct. So there was yeah, that exactly. instant connection and yes. relatability. Mm-hmm. So for anybody out there that is maybe taking that first step and wanting to be more open mm-hmm. about their emotional state, right? Find somebody that you can connect with. And yeah. it doesn't always have to be somebody that has all of the credentials mm-hmm. next yeah. to the name. Cause again, I was in that world and I did that for three years. And mm-hmm. I remember on so many different occasions, my therapist freaking out and yeah. I asking her how she's doing. Oh, I'm just trying to stay sane with life at home. And I'm thinking, well, shoot, where are you at in yeah. your own life? How are you supposed to guide me to feel more positive in my life when you're clearly not? So be mindful of who that person is going yeah. to be. Yeah. And just because they have all the credentials next to the name, it does not mean that they are a fit for you. It, so if that first experience, actually, if you want to go into a therapy therapist's office, mm-hmm. your first session is going to be like an interview. They're going to yeah. be interviewing yeah, 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 you. Yeah. Turn that interview around. Yeah, and interview yeah, yeah. I, wow. That's that's so, yeah. My, my analogy, well, more with real estate, but... Hey, just because of the, um, they're in the NBA doesn't mean they're LeBron. So, mm-hmm. yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys again for watching, making it this far. And uh, I will see you guys next time.